Okay. Let me unmute you. <laughs> hey, everybody. How y'all doing? <laughs> Good evening, folks. God, God, my, my internet. Doing? perseveres today i hope it shocks the, sh the crap out of me and and is good but i doubt it <laughs> how you doing kj i'm doing good you know in uh, november of KJ. 2020 can you hear me can you hear me i can't hear you you can you hear me now i can <laughs> okay well i don't know what what's going on can you hear me yes Okay. In November of 2021, Gilbert police recommended attempted murder charges to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office to be filed against Lori and Chad, who were believed to have orchestrated the shooting, uh, the attempted shooting of Brandon. And the prosecutors chose not to charge Chad. And uh, Lori's case is still being reviewed. But to top it all off, charges for Melanie felony were not submitted to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Why? And, and, Why? Okay, maybe I have it wrong. <laughs> um, it's so freaking confusing. It is. This is the most in in Keith Moore convoluted. <laughs> you just I mean, you just think about that. You know, Alex isn't here, and you've got over there in Arizona. These police officers and investigators, they recommended murder, attempted murder charges on Chad and Lori. And they did not want to charge Chad, but they do. They say they're still reviewing Lori's case. And that's been over a year ago. Why haven't we gotten any movement on it? Isn't that weird? It's weird. I'm wanting you, to know if my... And I want to know, y'all, let me know if my internet is acting up. Because <laughs> it's showing just the lowest on the signal. So, I'm, I'm it's got me paranoid. <laughs> um, well, I can hear you. Anyway. I can hear you just fine. I, I can see you just fine. So, I don't know. <laughs> if it's streaming fine. That, that's all. But, I mean, because I've had the, the past two have been horrible. So, um, anyways, um I don't know. It, it it makes no sense. And I'm trying to figure it out. I th we're all trying to figure it out, right? <laughs> yeah, well, what does that echo? What does that echo? That echoes also that Lori is charged with conspiracy to kill her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. But Chad was not implicated in it. But he have well, he would have to be implicated in this one because he rolled in uh, the tire, the wheel, because he couldn't carry it. <laughs> there you go. And... Uh, to the Jeep, and there was a seat that they removed from Tylee's Jeep and put into that storage unit that that uh, Lori got on October the 1st. She rented it under Lori Ryan, just a extra. That's that overt kind of thing I learned about, right? Being overt, like doing extra things to cover things up. And so she did that a lot, you know, even when she moved, when they moved to Hawaii, for instance, uh, her and Chad. Or whenever they got, they they left uh, Rexburg because you know the welfare check. They go, but it was planned, right? <laughs> well, on the actual day, uh, on the actual day of the shooting, as I look through my records, uh, marks the date of the shooting. And Gilbert, Alex's burner phone, and Chad's burner phone make contact multiple times. Brandon witnesses the muzzle of a firearm pointing towards his Tesla moments before a shot is fired. After his car is hit, we all know Brandon drives off. And then right after that, what happens? Alex's phone makes two calls to Chad's phone. The throwaway phones also communicate one last time. Alex drives near Green River, Utah. I mean, is he just, he just, uh, Chad has nothing to do with this, but Alex is going to talk to him before and after the attempt on Brandon's life. And we've got the storage uh, video of Chad helping Lori in there with the tire and the seat. Uh, I mean, it, I just don't have any faith in Arizona anymore, really, to be honest with you. Right. I'm getting Jason to come hook his phone up, so I, I'll stop freezing. <laughs> so will you go ahead and talk while I go run and grab him and his phone or his phone? Yeah, great. Uh, so... 
what, what, what I've seen there going down memory lane and all, um, it, it's still to me, it's almost been a year in November of 2022. It'll be one year since Gilbert police recommended the attempted murder charges of Brandon to the Maricopa County's attorney's office. And somebody absolutely in that office doesn't even want to look at Chad and they don't want to look at Melanie P. So we got news here recently. We got the news of Melanie P's little felony there. Her third or is a third, uh, third class felony. And um, everybody wants to know how that's going to go. Well, how about this? Would anyone be so kind as to tell OKJ where I can find felony Melanie's mugshot for this arrest that she just, that Justin Lum just talked about? Where is it? What about her initial appearance? You know, like the one that Kobe had? Why isn't that one being um, broadcast? And we know she's got a hearing on September the 26th. What kind of hearing is this? Is this a hearing, uh, an initial appearance? Because the bottom line is this. In the report at it, uh, that Justin Lum has, it shows quite clearly that they interviewed her slimy attorney, Garrett Smith. This is my opinion. I'm sorry, Garrett Smith is a slimy attorney in my view. His, uh, well, his clients include uh, Zulema, Summer, uh, Melanie P. Oh, he's a good one, I'm sure. The bottom line is they, 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 they interviewed him. And they were able to go from that interview where he calls Brandon dumb and everything else. They just, uh, the law enforcement there say there's probable cause. Now, did they work something out with Garrett while he was there at the interview so that she wouldn't have to go down this road like Kobe Ryan did in, and, and, and it interesting Maricopa County uh, DA's office. Uh, does anybody want to see anything a little fishy going on here or is this just me or, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm so just thrown back at what this DA's office has in their filing cabinet as we speak. And uh, then you go from, uh, what is it? The October the 2nd was the attempt, right, of 2019. But you turn around and you look in the report that the very day after, on October the 3rd, that's when investigators say that Pulaski was supposed to remove herself from the account no more than 60 days after the sale of the former couple's property on what date? October the 3rd of 2019. So let's just stop a minute. Let's think about that. If October 2nd, Brandon's getting shot at, and the very next day she was supposed to do that. And we believe that Alex did that. How would Alex know the legality of how things stood with Melanie P in terms of the property uh, being on October the 3rd of 2019? She would have had to tell Lori or Alex. She would have had to do that, plain and simple. I mean, think about that. If you've got someone to get shot at on the 2nd of October at 2019, and they've got it on record that the very next day the property was supposed to be distributed, yeah, they were still in this joint custody battle. But in terms of the assets and stuff, I guess that included an insurance policy, huh? And they yeah. wanted to make sure that they did it before she had to sign on the dotted line that this would all be done the way it was being done. What do y'all think? Uh, G.I. <laughs> Jane says we were freaked out. Uh, uh, oh, Maggie yeah. Hogland says, remember the state has seven years to file charges. After that, the statute of limitations runs out, but murder charges don't have a statute of limitations. I went to the to G.I. Jane, it finished it out. Melanie was interviewed by the leader to be let in. And I agree with that. I think, you know, there wasn't no, oh, well, Lori was going to have her way. If Lori wanted her niece, Melanie, to be in their little cult, she, she I mean, Chad's not going to go against the queen. I mean, that's where he's getting his booty, right? <laughs> I wonder the, I wonder what Lori's 
like motives were to include Melanie in that, you know, just to get, just to turn her against Brandon, just to, to do all these things to get Melanie to not really, she didn't really move with her when she moved allegedly, you know, but it's weird. Is that why you think that was part of the plan the whole time? And if so, where, where can we find it in the doc? Maybe well, it's not it, it, it would seem to me that Brandon was, uh, you know, he was doing his part and he, he's the one that said that he didn't know there was something wrong with the marriage. And then when she started to pull away, herself in plenty of the documents and the Gilbert documents and all, and I'll be glad to read those here in a minute was saying that, uh, Melanie P was saying that Brandon and, um, and Adam and Charles was trying to get her away from her aunt Lori, that they were trying to, uh, pressure her and all this and that. Well, she'd already made up her mind. I mean, whether Lori gave her a context to do it by saying Brandon was gay or not, she wanted out. She wanted out. If you love somebody and you're married to them and you have your ups and downs, no matter what anybody says outside of that, you're going to stand by your spouse, especially one you've had children with. Yeah. She, yeah. she wanted out. She wanted to be like your Aunt Lori, plain and uh -huh. simple. Don't you? Oh, that's my Aunt Lori. Uh -huh. <laughs> what? Uh -huh. I'm, oh, froze. I'm froze, Jason says. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me mute. I'll be back, KJ. Okay, well, back to Melanie P, y'all. You know, we were all excited and, 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 you know, everything that some movement, although this is unrelated, but let me just share this with y'all, you know, because, okay, Jay, I like to read between the lines. I looked back a little bit. Did y'all know that what Melanie P has been charged with uh, back in October 16th of 2019 in a Gilbert PD report, it says quite clearly, Brandon contacted me to, to advise me he learned Melanie was still on his financial accounts despite her agreement to remove herself in August of 2019. Brandon had messaged correspondence with Melanie on uh, October the 7th of 2019 when she agreed to remove her name from his accounts. As of this date, Melanie was still on Brandon's accounts, and as a result, Brandon transferred the funds to a different financial institution. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is this ain't Melanie P's first rodeo. She wanted to stay attached to Brandon's uh, account there, even though she made an agreement to get off of it, even back in 2019. So this whole, I mean, Gilbert's seeing this. Gilbert Police Department is saying this. They've made a report. They've said it. And now what happens in 2020, in March of 2020, what does she do? She goes right back on his account where she was, she made an agreement not to go on that account. So this is felony Melanie's uh, pattern here, y'all. She's done this more than once. She's got to stay close to the moolah, don't you know? And besides that, but uh, in 2020, if y'all think of March of 2020, Lori's ass is being hauled back from Hawaii into Idaho. Melanie P, she's with Ian, and I'm assuming that Ian just can't bring home the bacon like Melanie P needs. She wants to continue to go into her ex-husband's account to do what? It wasn't about the custody in this uh, charge that she's been charged with. It was about money. She wanted a copy of a $12,000 check because even her slimy attorney said that she felt like Brandon owed her money. So it wasn't to, to prove anything, oh, I'm the better parent or anything. In fact, she gives her attorney an illegal exhibit and her attorney doesn't know where it's come from and her attorney was there back when she agreed not to go on Brandon's account. I mean, this attorney is so competent that she hands him this exhibit for her custody battle there and it comes illegally and he can't put two and two together. 
Well, imagine that. Imagine maybe that's why they were asking Garrett Smith in an interview about it all. And this whole issue about calling Brandon Boudreau dumb. I mean, you know, that's that's the pot turning black kettle, whatever you want to call it. It's ridiculous. And so Melanie P has a history of this. I am sure that if you looked at the other cult members, they're all going to do what they can to get one over on the government or, or the law enforcement. Lori uh, flipped her nose back when she was with Joseph Ryan going through all that, not uh, being in contempt of court. And, and obviously the, the crescendo of it all is not being able to abide by court orders to produce the kids because at that time she couldn't produce those kids. But she thought if nobody ever finds the bodies, then I'll be in the flip free and clear. And just as Melanie P, what did Melanie P think she would, what was she going to get out of doing something illegal as uh, tampering with Brandon Boudreaux's uh, bank account there after a divorce? She was going to get more money. Well, did she need money? Well, I can tell you right now, she's going to need some money to pay that Garrett Smith because she's got this court here in September the 26th. It's a hearing. Again, let me reiterate, there was no mugshot of Melanie P for this arrest. Maybe it's because it was a class three felony and they were able to just give her a summons. I, you know, when it comes to the Maricopa County DA's office, I, again, I, I don't look kindly upon them. Um, and I never saw any initial appearance of Melanie P. Not one, not, a, you know, like Kobe did when Kobe got arrested. Are they going to allow Melanie P to walk away? And here's another question, y'all. If she was convicted December of 2020 of criminal trespassing with a domestic violence enhancement put on probation, how long was she put on probation? Sometimes they'll put them on a year. Maybe they'll put them on a three-year probation. Boy, old KJ would love to know if she was still on probation when she pulled this shit, excuse my French, because if she was still on probation, she would be, uh, it would be a probation violation, really. I, I'm assuming that this was in Utah. What do you, what do y'all got to say about it? Melanie P is no stronger, uh, no stronger, excuse me, stranger to the law. She's had at least three major crimes that I can think of. One, trespassing in Utah. Two, attempt to murder Brandon. And three, now this. I hope charges finally stick for her, says KCL. Well, that's, that's KCL, I, I could agree with that. But, you know, like I said a little earlier, it's, they say quite clearly that they, that, uh, that they recommended charges for uh, Chad and Lori, and they're not going to go after Chad for the attempt on Brandon's life. And they filed no charges on Melanie, felony Melanie P. They have filed none. So you mm -hmm. have to look at the dates and you have to ask. Okay. Uh, November, November of 2021. Right. Now mm -hmm. just, 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 just listen to me and I'll shut up. No. November of November the 16th of 2021, we, you know, the Gilbert Police Department recommends attempted murder charges, right? To the Maricopa County Attorney's Office on the attempt on Brandon's life, right? Well, yeah. when did they start their investigation into what they just now charged Melanie P with? The investigation started in November of 2021. So all in the month of November of 2021, not only is law enforcement recommending charges on Chad and Lori, but they're also, it says the investigation started in November of 2021, and a detective with Mesa PD interviewed Pulaski's attorney, Garrett Smith. So things picked up after, you know, maybe it was before the 16th of November, or maybe it was after the November 16th recommendation for charges on attempted murder of Brandon, but Melanie Pulaski was being looked at. And, and one has to ask the question, 
why such a one charge, one felony charge, third class felony here? I think it's why are they doing why are they doing this? And it's something Brandon sued. Well, here's a good question, uh, Carisha. Because she's been charged with this and she might get probation or she might even get jail time, which I doubt. But what's right. going to happen with the joint custody between her and Brandon now that she's been charged with this? Do you think he'll go and try to go back into the courts and get full custody or do you think he'll just leave it be? I, I really don't. Like, I got so, I was so upset whenever. I mean, and I don't know. I don't know if they're working with Idaho. I have no idea what, how they're doing that. It, That's what I was thinking. I was thinking if Idaho really had Melanie P's testimony, and you could find it if she cooperated in the grand jury. Remember, she had to be there. Mm -hmm. If they have got a transcript of her testimony and she wasn't hostile or whatever, obviously obviously they don't have an issue with them putting Melanie P out here on a third class felony. In my opinion, I think that yeah. Idaho probably, and it's just my opinion, they probably cut Melanie P loose because she wasn't going to cooperate. And they, and, and so they told Gilbert, you know, this is just a theory. They told Gilbert, y'all go ahead. If y'all want to go after her, go on, do it. Because these law enforcement agencies do work together. And when they were going through their custody battle, Brandon and Melanie P, there was a point where uh, Brandon's attorney wanted to bring in someone from Idaho to back up his claim of Melanie being in the cult and all that. But the person, and I forgot who it was, he was a law enforcement guy. They had a meeting or something and Said, basically, I, this is just the way I see it. They said, listen, Brandon, we know you're in the middle of a custody battle, but we are investigating something way more serious. And um, we don't want this guy. And they even filed something saying that they were not going to let this guy. They didn't want him to be subpoenaed to go to a child custody hearing because it would disrupt the investigation into Chad and Lori and the, and the murders and all of that other stuff. So all I'm trying to say is, is if I can see some signal there uh, that these law enforcement agencies kind of have worked back and forth with one another. And if you think about it, think about the interviews. First, you've got Chandler interviewing people. Then you got Fremont, uh, you know, Rexburg there. They're all, they've all remember at the beginning. They called Gilbert to ask Gilbert about something. And Gilbert was uh, working with uh, Fremont County in terms of the attempt on Brandon's life to survey and find out where that Jeep was. We know that the beginning of uh, November, I think it was November the 4th of 2019, they impounded Charles's Jeep. And you think about that think about that they come in there the police come in there and haul that jeep away right in front of lori alex and chad obviously will know about it they know shit's about to get real and what happens a couple of weeks go by they've got this hanging over their head they know they've taken the jeep they're not there going what are y'all taking the jeep for yeah. we didn't do nothing wrong no they let them take it because they knew they knew <laughs> that things were hey they already had uh, Kay Woodcock hot on their trail over Charles. Now they've got another thing over their head, and that is the attempt on Brandon's life. And by the time the welfare check happens, they're out the door. They are right. out the door. Oh, I'm going to shoot my computer. Yeah, no, that, I'm sure. Does anyone does anyone really believe that anything major is going to happen to Melanie P? Are we going to get to see her at this September 26 hearing? <laughs> I don't think so. But it'll be, I don't know. I just like seeing her in the hot seat, that's for sure. I mean, that's, that's one thing. But I, I don't know. I just... 
it's like sometimes I think I have it figured out somewhat <laughs> more more times than others. And the rest of the time, I'm just like, I have no idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> like I said, uh, Melanie P., this ain't her first rodeo. Uh, this whole situation is slowly, you know, like when you, when you see that Melanie P. has been uh, arrested, for this computer tampering and it's class three felony they, stuff. I, I don't think they would arrest her. I don't think that's something they're, you know, I don't think that's crimes. You know, you don't, you don't think that they took her downtown, but they've charged her with this. You don't think that she, there's a procedure there where she has to go. I mean, there's a procedure. Yeah. But I mean, I mean I, when I really somebody's like charged, yeah, when someone's charged with a financial crime, they still have to go. You know, they still have to go down to the police station. They can't just, oh, we'll show up another time. Right. That That's what bothers me is I trust Justin Lum's reporting on this. But again, nobody, everybody was cameras on when go. Kobe got arrested. <laughs> but as soon as one of these cult members uh, is being charged with something, he doesn't... Uh, say anything about she bailed out or she came downtown or even even a line in there saying that the her attorney worked it out that she'd show up at the next hearing ain't nothing said about any of it and again there is no mugshot so the question is is why are they doing this because mm -hmm. uh you know i'm still wondering why they did that with kobe and this is the same maricopa county da's office so they're going to do that to Kobe and then they're going to let him walk. And now they're going to, they're going to have this hearing on September 26th with Melanie P. What's this all about? Really? I mean, I, I really, is it just so cut and dry that, that she just did this going on his computer. And so Gilbert's just not going to allow him to give her a pass again or anything like that. I don't know. I, like, like Biggie said, I think that Brandon is just pissed off and he's just, spanking it to her i think that's exactly what it is because nothing else seems to be moving maybe he got frustrated he's like well hell i'm gonna just press charges on her for this well don't you find it interesting that the gilbert pd knew all the way back in october of 2019 that she'd been pulling this crap going on after uh going on his agreeing to remove her name from his account and right. she still was on Brandon's account. He had to transfer funds in a different financial institution. She'd done this before. So Gilbert knew she'd done it before. Um, and this was before their divorce was final. So Gilbert couldn't do anything about it. But they did put it in their report. And now she's doing it. She's done it again. But this time she's not going to be able to get away with it. Uh, whether it's probation, whether it's a slap on the wrist, I don't know. But um, I, it don't seem to me right. that uh, that Idaho's going to, you know, do anything uh, in terms of, you know, taking her uh, and putting her on the stand. I mean, <laughs> I wonder you think, that, do you I, think yeah. Melanie P will go on the stand? I, I don't know. Wait, I didn't hear you. you Do you think Melanie P will go on the stand at the trial? Uh, I would hope so. Well, with her attitude of I would rather go to prison than turn on my Aunt Lori, I'm sure she would probably be a better uh, witness for the defense than she would for the prosecution. Yeah. But you know you this this whole idea, this whole idea that they're going to give her a year in jail, or she could get what eight point seven years in prison. Yeah. Well, you know, you never know what they're going to do. You, you just don't know. But they sure didn't want to give uh, recommended charges for her on the attempt on uh, Brandon's life, even though they have it in the report that even Brandon said that she was one of only a few that had his address. And now right. we know it was Alex. How would Alex know? How would Alex know where he was at? Even if he knew, how would he know that Brandon was going to be pulling up when he was going to be pulling up? Right. I've heard stories from like 
um, Melanie had put something, some kind of watch or something on her, one of their kids. And that would, you know, it tracks, you know, kind of like a Fitbit. You can track them, right? It counts your steps. It, it, I used to have one. I did 13,000 steps a day. Not anymore. But, you know, same thing. It, it's a, a, another way of tracking somebody. And I've never heard anything else about it since. You know, of course not. It's all hearsay. Well, I can tell you this. This was Lori and Chad's plan. They were trying to find ways to get money. And they were willing to sacrifice Lori's mm -hmm. niece and her relationship with her own children just to get what they wanted to get. Yeah. Everything. Anything, everything, anybody, and everybody. You know, it, it, it don't even matter. Nothing. Ashley, T Ashley T says, I think the headline would be Melanie arrested if that was the case. I guess she was just served with papers. Yeah. And that makes sense, Ashley T. I, I, I myself would think that if you're being charged with a, a felony, that you would at least, I mean, maybe they went there and, and that was when her attorney there had the interview. They booked her and, and let her out with her attorney. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what happened. Because again, Justin Lum is not being clear. I trust Justin Lum's reporting. Don't get me wrong. I just think, you know, that's the question everybody wants to know. Well, if she's being charged with this, has she been arrested and released? Right. And what kind of crimes where you're charged with something, which is a felony, even if it is a third class felony, and you're not a booked? I mean, it would seem that you would be booked and then uh, maybe, you know, leave within an hour with your attorney. But it just don't seem like that uh, information is available. Right. Correct. <laughs> OK, I don't know what's going on back here. I'm having some. <laughs> I hate I hate. This. <laughs> OK, go ahead. Because, uh, yeah, I was trying to do something, but I was having technical difficulties. But, yeah, I, I did upload that screenshot. Of, this is how I think they're wiggling around with this slimy uh, slimy attorney. <laughs> Gary Smith. Boy, I mean, he is He's rich, that. Haiti. He ain't rich monetarily, but he is something. I'm going to tell you what, to allow your client to bring in an illegal exhibit and not know where she got it. I mean, that's incompetence all the way through. Well, I, I, somebody, needs to call the name, somebody needs to call the Arizona bar on him. He's lost, lost his, his um, license, whatever. His, yeah, he's lost that twice, I think, two times for sure, because I Googled it a while back. Um, but it's been a long time since the screenshot so you know i don't i can't find them right away <laughs> rom bohedro says he looks like one of the muppet show on the muppet show there rom I, those muppets are too cute right. i don't i love the muppets <laughs> go back to eating shoes rombo <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> I, I just i don't know he's he's slimy in my opinion i don't want him to sue me he seems to type, <laughs> you know, well, because we, he, got, we, he got sued him, his wife and uh, Jarvis and his wife were sued by Brandon and awarded $12 million. Doesn't mean he's going to get it. <laughs> they said that Brandon should collect about 2 million. Don't yeah. you think it don't, don't you think it's kind of uh, funny? I mean, in some ways that Melanie P's reaching for money. I mean, can't Ian support her? Right. And think about the money she's out now. Every time Garrett Smith shows up, it's least at least a hundred dollars an hour. I mean, I don't know where she needs to get a job at Kentucky Fried Chicken or somewhere. <laughs> Wear one of those Kentucky Fried Chicken hats, and or she needs to do something to to start making a little money uh, because she's got a hearing coming up and she's going to have quite a bill with old Garrett Smith now that he's got a. A lawsuit that he's got to pay out. Right. <laughs> well, he's LLC, so limited liability. 
Yeah, he gets a lot of free publicity by inserting himself uh, in the case, says Kim DiMaggio. A lot of people. Yeah, well, that's not the kind of thing. A lot of people do. Uh, I mean, what what kind of uh, publicity is that? You can't even keep your own client from doing something illegal. I mean, come on. I mean, and 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 for him to personally attack Brandon, that is so unprofessional and so unethical. And I think it's funny that the police officers actually put it in there that that's what he said. I mean, it just goes to show you that. I mean, I and this is my opinion. I believe law enforcement there made a lot of mistakes, but I think they're trying to make up for it now. And I think the Maricopa County DA's office ought to be ashamed of themselves for not charging Chad Daybell and Charles Vallow's uh, conspiracy to commit murder or the attempt on Brandon's life. Right. I think it's pathetic. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I agree. I know you guys all agree also. But do you know but how that looks for Chad Daybell, Cresha? Good. It looks really peachy. It does, because it looks like uh, Lori it's and Alex boy. started the crime spree in Arizona, and yeah. Chad wasn't involved. There wasn't enough evidence. Tire. He rolled a tire and, and helped grab a seat because because this Denzel in distress, who he liked to pat her butt, couldn't do it by herself because she's too damn skinny. <laughs> oh, yeah. She, she, yeah. He, well, you know, reasonable doubt. The whole thing, he could easily say, well, yeah. you know, I was in this adulterous affair with her. And, uh, you know, it was just a few weeks before I murdered my wife. And, yeah. uh, and she wanted me to help her with a tire and a seat. And it I just, don't know coincidentally, why. it just, it just happened to be on the day that, uh, Brandon Boudreaux saw the Jeep and the and Alex there trying to shoot him and take him out. And right. then you've got you've got October the 9th. They try again with Tammy. Man, they are hard up for some cash, are they not? <laughs> Definitely. I did see that G.I. Jane. Uh Ian's Twitter account has uh was Love Machine, which I can read it to y'all. I don't want to put it on here because it has a uh, Melanie. Felony Melanie, and it has Ian and their baby. And I didn't upload that. So I'll go find that while you while you talk. <laughs> well, so, but yeah, it's interesting. He is know, a, love, a love machine, let me tell you. I wanna I just I just want to say that in this day and time, you know, when I when I began trying to get justice through understanding, I thought evidence was evidence. Right. But when you've got when you've got what they have in way of text message, in way of what was on mm -hmm. the burner phones, who called who, and all this and that, um, and then to top it all off, think about this: they have an opportunity to update in the Maricopa County DA's office, now that they know Idaho is seeking the death penalty on these obvious murders, they're not even going to go there with Chad Daybell on Charles's murder. They're not even going to go. That They just don't have enough evidence. I guarantee you they got enough evidence. I guarantee you they got enough evidence. You know what it is? They just don't want to spend the money. They don't, they, they, to me, they don't want to spend the money to have any, it's enough. They, probably think that they've got Lori on conspiracy to commit murder on Charles. And I thank God that something's being done, but you know, I was, I was looking for full throated justice for Charles. So, Valo. I mean, is about as bold as their crimes, their alleged crimes, at least that, at least you know, it doesn't match all the things that they've done. The, the repercussions don't match. They don't line up enough for me yeah well you just think about this if it, it we all know melanie p knew a lot she knew enough and she, she knew, knew about this whole situation and for the uh maricopa county da's office not to recommend charges on her can you imagine the duper's delight on her face <laughs> does anybody think like does anybody here think that melanie got duped just curious there's sometimes when I, I don't, um, well, <laughs> I, sometimes I, I've, I'm like, well, how could, how could they have done that? How could that and her not know a damn thing? Nothing. So the, 
Like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to feel any kind of empathy or nothing for her because she knew. She knew. She knew when she told all of us via, you know, uh, her interviews and everything that this JJ, you know, I think it was for court. I forget who it was. But anyway, she said that JJ was just busy with uh, the teach whomever. He wasn't even in damn school. You know, and then Tylee was always away with her friends. What friends? What friends? She hadn't been there long enough to and, have friends. And she said that their rooms were were made up. And then Melanie and um, uh, David, uh, David, oh, Warwick. Warwick. Yeah, they go and they sleeping on the damn floor because JJ's mattress is in the corner of Lori's room. According to the nanny. Well, the My bottom belief. line is, is those things that she put yeah. in that storage unit were the items that she strolled around that house to make it look like they were still there. And Melanie P talked to Lori on text message. And she knew, I mean, what, a day after the shooting, they talked to her and she doesn't remember what she did the day before. I know. Te or, wow. <laughs> but can recite all kinds of Book of Mormon, you know, don't know what she did the day before. And you know what's interesting yeah. about it all is she could just, she had fears and with Ian. These were just fears, but mm -hmm. she absolutely had fears over stuff that actually came to be. Yep. I mean, that's, that's no something. coincidence. She is a psychic. She needs. <laughs> Jeez. It doesn't make any sense. They don't make sense. None of nothing that they do or spew <laughs> makes a lick of sense. But there's, I, I don't know how they're so, they're so measured in what they say and how they say it. I don't understand that. I, I, that, that throws me off. Right. You're just like, what? And she always circles circles the damn wagon, you know. Hey, I'm I'm looking on here. The L mom's wife says, just stopping by to say, hey, y'all. I hope everyone is doing well. Miss you. Hey, the L mom's wife. Hey, miss y'all. Uh, tell Jen I emailed her yesterday. Please, I miss her a lot. Um, anyway, I just pulled Twitter up on my uh, desktop. And I've never been here before on my desktop, so everything looks okay. Now let me type it in. Ian Polowski. Let me do that. Um, I'm gonna kind of take a stroll down memory lane, I guess. Why not? Why not share? Well, when um, you when you think about these this puny little charge of Melanie P, you have to look at the whole context of the whole everything that's ever happened you know yeah oh right and so this is uh june 11th 2020 bring jj and tylee home the woman on the left k woodcock jj Vallow's grandma next to her is natalie plowski the ex-wife of ian plowski now married to Lori Vallow's niece boy he's lucky Natalie has also been impacted by this case. She made sure to support Kay tonight. And that wow. was to bring Kay and Tylee home. And Natalie, oh, oh she's a doll. She is a doll. And I've, then, never, I've never seen a picture of her. How sweet. Yeah, that, that's her. I've met their kids too, but that was, that was, they're, they're even bigger now. <laughs> um, now that's the dateline I've started the show with is this one right here. Shane Bishop is a, uh, a Dateline producer. Uh, and for that 2020 Dateline Friday exclusive interview with Lori Vallow Daybell's knee insider, family insider. Now, Melanie Pulowski and husband Ian, who wore an FBI wire on his own wife to try to help find Tylee and JJ. <laughs> well, let me tell you how noble that was. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what I said two years ago. Ian's the key. She can't backtrack on anything, and neither can he. And I don't know how Garrett Slimy Smith there is going to, I mean, I don't know how he's going to twist all that, but 
very carefully. <laughs> That's how they do it. Um, bonus episode. Oh, okay. She's these people are diving into the court documents that Brandon Boudreau submitted during his what the hell custody battle with Melanie. This was allegedly written by Melanie's new husband, Ian Pulaski. It includes info on the cult, on what Laurie meant by zombies, and more. <laughs> and then this is a uh, Garna Mejia update. Melanie Pulaski speaks out through her attorney, saying she does she doesn't know where Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallo are located, and has cooperated with the FBI. Anyways, Melanie is Lori Vallow's niece. Uh, Melanie divorced Brandon Boudreau and remarried Ian Pulaski last November. And this letter says right here, Melanie Pulaski does not know the whereabouts of her aunt's children. Brandon Boudreau lies to wrongfully influence the, ch uh, the child custody uh, case. Jesus. Media irresponsibly, of course, blame it on the media, reports one-sided and unsub... Uh, oh my God, I can't talk. Unsubstantiated... Accusations. <clears throat> Brandon Boudreau hides his own family's dark and sinister acts and past. And it says, um, Miss, and this is February 26, 2020. Miss Melanie Pulaski, represented by Robert P. Jarvis and Garrett L. Smith of the law office of Robert. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strenuously denies the innuendos and the allegations that she knows the whereabouts of the missing Vallow kids. <laughs> okay. And that she has been involved in any wrongdoing. God forbid. Mr. Jarvis stated Ms. Pulaski has cooperated with law enforcement, including meeting for hours with the FBI on three separate days. She probably didn't remember that. Told the FBI she does not know the, the missing children of her aunt, Lori Bellow. Brandon Boudreaux has a history of victims optimizing women with which is probably an extension of his use of extreme and dark pornography <laughs> anyways this is why he got 12 million dollars right here because they slandered this and i hate i don't even want to repeat it really uh, it, it just it shows you the incompetence they, no, attack, they attack the character if y'all if i don't know what it is but you know how Lori did joe you know how Lori did charles you know how it's a pattern that you kind of see with narcissistic behavior traits. I'm not a professional, but I'm not dumb. Okay. I, I have human experience <laughs> and they attack the character. That's what they, Brenda didn't come out saying none of that. He just said, or, you know, his attorney said the obvious, what, <laughs> you know, they're the cult, cult like behavior, you know? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this is in terms of Garrett Smith, I think he needs to be reminded that on uh, October the 3rd, which was the day after the attempt on Brandon's life, police interview Melanie, who denies any knowledge of the shooting and could not explain the details of that day. She confirmed relationships with Alex and Lori, but denied being close to them. She also did not want to share their phone numbers. Pillar says in the following weeks after the shooting, Melanie moves to Rexburg to live in the same apartment complex as her aunt Lori and uncle Alex. Additional mm -hmm. homicides were discovered, which were Tammy Daybell and Charles Vallow. Melanie married Ann Pulaski. Alex married Zulema and Chad married Lori and Tammy's body would be exhumed and Alex died of natural causes, which I don't believe that. Months later, <laughs> Lori and Chad were arrested and the remains of blessed JJ and Tylee were discovered. Um, it says biological evidence found in the recovered Jeep Wrangler confirmed Alex was inside and gunshot residue was found by the back door. Yeah. And there is no doubt in my mind that, uh, Chad and Lori absolutely ordered this, just like they ordered everything else, because they're wusses. They're cowards. They have to get some uh, half brain, one slice of bread short of loaf, Alex, to do their dirty work. I believe it. And Alex telling Zulema that, oh, I think I'm going to be the scapegoat. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, that was the plan all along because Lori would. You think she would show up to her Alex, her beloved protector's funeral? No. Do you think Lori would give a rat's ass about anyone that ever cared anything for her? The bottom line is, is the two 
people, humans, children, innocent children that loved her more than anything in this world. She absolutely destroyed them. Yep. Yep. And then wants to get, and then wants to be free among, <laughs> among everybody else, among the free world. She don't think she did anything wrong. Neither one of them think they did anything. None of them think they did anything wrong. Nobody, that, that's just it. That's what's wrong with, I, I think with a lot of people today um, is everybody is demanding respect, but nobody, I forget how that goes. Uh, nobody's taking a, you know, standing up to accountability. Nobody's wanting to be held accountable. Everybody wants their right, but nobody wants to be there for when it's time to be accountable. I still messed that up, but yeah. <laughs> Love you, Kay. Love tell you. Larry I said hello. Tell her, tell Wayne, uh, tell him that Wayne said hello and to call anytime. Wayne misses talking to him. He don't want to bother Larry. So please have Larry call him or text him or something sometime. We don't want to, we don't want to intrude or anything. Um, so let him know that. And I love <laughs> you, Kay. You are Ashley. so beautiful every time I see you on TV. You know, I'm telling the truth. I don't, I don't toot horns here. Right. I tell the truth. Ashley T said something about it passed and I don't remember. Let me go back. Oh yeah. I thought the same thing, Ashley. I miss them too. They're my babies. That was strange. Even for Lolo. Right. That was, that was cryptic to me. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I typed F-U-C-K-Y-O-U so quick on the on my keyboard, yeah. it wasn't even funny. <laughs> are, are you talking about that Netflix thing? Yep. Well, I didn't watch it, but I did run across this little article here. Because, you know, I covered that book from uh, Leah Soddle. Yeah, I read it. And, I read it. I listened. Yeah, Leah Soddle uh, tweeted out, Lori Vallow's parents somehow lie about the number of children they birthed. Yep. Lori's sister, Stacy, mother of Melanie Boudreaux, a critical player in the story, is simply deleted from the family tree. Her story is critical to understanding Lori's niece's affection for her aunt. And that was from Leah Soddle. And it's correct. And I haven't watched it. But all the Rays and everyone that I've talked to was talking about they left Stacy out. They left Stacy out. Well, guess Stacey what? And that Laura. Yeah, that would have been that would have been the connection uh, for what? Melanie P's obsessive, oh, I love my Aunt Lori shit, okay? That would have connected that. That would have connected it, and they left it out. Right. But it said the Lori Vallow Netflix docuseries got the family tree wrong. Here's why it matters. Every, every documentary has truth tellers. In the Netflix documentary, Sins of Our Mother features Janice Cox, mother of Lori Vallow Daybell, along with Vallow Daybell's son, Kobe Ryan, as the truth tellers. While Cox and Ryan were close to Vallow Daybell, there was a glaring omission in the family tree, the mother of Melanie Boudreaux. Melanie Boudreaux is the daughter of Stacy Cox, and she is briefly mentioned in the documentary. She is the niece of, uh, of Lori, and Brandon Boudreaux, her ex-husband, told Arizona Central, that Melanie Boudreaux spent time with the same religious group as Valo Daybell and that this precipitated their divorce. And for the Netflix docuseries to leave that out, they left out glaring admissions like a child uh, in someone's family tree call into question the veracity of the truth tellers. And they also left out other things as well. Um, they, they left out... Um, it's it, it, they were talking about in the in the docu series. Uh, they were talking about how they left out this whole issue about. Uh, let's see the might be in there. Look, hey, I want to play this for you real quick. I do have the audio from that. Okay. Okay. How are you, Mama? You're so sorry. You're sorry. Yeah. You're sorry. Are you sorry for me? Or are you sorry for my siblings? 
my brother, who's seven years old, is dead, and my little sister, who's 16, is dead. What I've seen is that you know. You didn't, you were there, so you saw everything that happened, huh? That's interesting. <laughs> this did not just happen. They were murdered. And the reason I'm calling you is because I can't even fathom what happened. I miss my family, mom. I know, baby. Me too. What do you mean you miss them? How can you miss them, mom? How can I not? How can I not? <laughs> They're my babies. Both parents faced. Yeah. I mean, that, that gives me freaking chills and makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck and makes me want to just attack. <laughs> there ain't no damn way that she was brainwashed and that Chad made her do this. This woman was the queen of the 144,000. This woman told everyone at Melanie Gibbs group there when Melanie Gibb had her over there that she had fought through the millennia, that she was a mighty warrior and all this crap, and that she was equal to men. And she wants to sit there. And this is the first time I'm hearing it. My blood yeah. pressure is going up. I'm sorry. I knew it would be. I mean, not that, but I knew that you had not watched it. Um, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that triggering? It's infuriating. And let me, let me play this part. This is from Janice. <laughs> to look back at it. This is her explaining her family. Everything seemed normal. <laughs> we had two boys a year apart, Alex and Adam. Adam doll he's always been a doll to his family and it's just super funny he wanted to be a stand-up comedian and then Lori was our next child Lori was just a darling little girl and then summer she's my youngest <laughs> it was just a big family and we did have a lot of fun. I raised all our kids in the LDS church. All of our kids love the Book of Mormon. And Lori's always loved the scriptures. I've got something to go with she this. She took to it right away. She was like eight, and I was trying to teach her some things. And she started crying. And when she got home, she told Janice and her brothers and sisters, Dad is a spiritual giant. Hold on to that thought. She was very sensitive to that. I just know that Lori is there. Is loved by her Heavenly Father as well as all other people who have been influenced and taken captive by Satan. She is Satan. Anyways, let me get now look. I've, I've I made a video about this. I just hadn't made it public yet. I'd already uploaded it and everything, but I, I mean, this just blows my mind. You know how I pick up patterns and they may mean nothing, but for her to feel like for Lori to feel like she's got to be surrounded by spiritual giants. Right? So this is a preparing a people Mesa. Um, what do you call it? Um, fireside. This is right. <laughs> Anyways, just listen. This is Thor Furiseth. Okay. Thor. Listen to this googly moogly. <laughs> Lord. People that are around me, and as they speak, I can feel their intentions and whether it's good or bad. Mm -mm. There is a war, just like these guys are saying, going on in our world right now. I will sit there and watch leaders get up and speak. And I will feel their intentions that they're trying to do good. And they'll have a light around them. And I'll be like so proud of them. And then I'll watch other leaders get up. And they'll have darkness all around them. And their intentions are to crush it and to ruin the system. And I feel their intentions going the wrong way. It makes me so, so, so sad. Wait for it. <laughs> there's, there's this extreme war going on with good over evil. And trying to destroy all the great things that we work so hard to build. And uh, so, anyways, I'm really grateful to be part of 
like a group of people that are, that are striving to expose these things and to to win the battle and for for good to win over evil. And, uh, okay. I'm just glad to be part of it. I'm surrounded by spiritual giants. <laughs> Hold on, I put spiritual giants and then I put this little clip in there. Dad is a spiritual giant. <laughs> I just thought that was way too weird. That is strange. This is almost over. I learned something from each and every person that I meet. And I just, I love being part of this. It's, it's much bigger than, than any of us can possibly grasp. <coughs> this is a massive scale, the gathering that's happening. Uh, this is a massive scale of the gathering that's happening. <laughs> the, um, the gathering. So, anyways, it's uh, he's teaching us to value uh, what we stand for and where. Yeah. We oh, yeah. So. I, I was just like, okay. I mean, I, I slapped that together. It was like four minute and 51 second video with, you know, intro and outro. And anyways, I was just like, okay. I mean, I know pair up all these, um, all these words. Remember the marinate thing, how we heard it from Melanie Boot, uh, and <laughs> Gip. I like to marinate. Yeah. And, and putting, yeah. and putting stuff on a shelf and everything. Oh, else. you know what else? Um, Melanie Pulowski said, I don't know what I don't know. Well, guess who else says that? Nancy James. I'm like, well, I mean, birds of a feather flock together. It doesn't surprise me, but I sure love to put their words together. I like to find the patterns. I like to put them together and I like to take those words and I like to use them. <laughs> Well, you know? I wonder. I wonder why Janice didn't. Um, why? Why when she did this next Netflix docu series and she's supposed to be this truth teller, why didn't Jan it says Janice Cox claimed to have spoken with JJ Ballo on October first of twenty nineteen mm. in an interview with CBS. JJ was last seen September twenty third of twenty nineteen. Yet Cox was not questioned about this. According to Fox News, the last known picture of J.J. was taken on September 22nd as Three he wore red, red, pa red pajamas. And y'all know the Three significance of the red pajamas. Which is why I want to wear red every single day. I don't really care for the color, but it, it represents uh, the homicide victims. It's Homicide Victim Awareness Month this month, which actually the day after Tally's birthday her birthday would have been September 24th. She would have turned 20. And the day after September 25th is uh, National Victim Awareness Homicide Day. Uh, JJ was murdered tomorrow, three years ago. Today was, oh, today. That picture was taken of him in those red pajamas. <laughs> and that, that hurts. It's got to hurt. It's got to hurt for you and your family. These anniversaries just keep rolling around and rolling around. And, you know, you shared with me about uh, East Idaho News's article and vid there about Larry, you know, talking yeah. about, you know, that, about wanting to put the children to rest. And it just, it breaks my heart. It really does. I, I wish, you know, there was some other way that they could stop, you know, all of this and let the defense and the prosecution just say, okay, we, I mean, what is the defense going to get out of another autopsy? Cause they sure as hell ain't going to prove they weren't murdered. Right. Just let Larry in there for two minutes. <laughs> just let him in, just let him in there with Chad and Lori for two minutes. That, that's it. And my brother. Well, I guarantee you there's enough people out there that would help bail him out. Yeah, I've definitely read those comments. <laughs> I'm like, good Lord. Okay, good. I'm not alone. <laughs> you know, I, I speak angrily. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm not above anybody else. Mm -hmm. I just try to rein it in. But, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of my life, you know, I just, I want to Always remember that it's the this is gonna win. God is love, and love always wins. That's just <laughs> that's it. It's the only. Well, thing that I know. Yeah, I know. Nate was talking to this 
veteran veteran attorney and he said quote certainly those bodies are the most significant of evidence in this set of cases and the best practice is to retain all the evidence until all of the appeals yeah. and all of the appeals of the appeals have been completed are they trying to say that they're not going to release the bodies after they are convicted and they go through the appeals process because all hell's right. going to break loose yep uh, interview yesterday. Uh, Y'all want me to pull it up? All I'm saying is, is I've never heard of bodies not being released after a trial. I uh, mean, right. Appeals. We know that a death penalty case can carry what? Uh, I mean, for, until they exhaust them. Besides I mean, that, just, Carisha, look, I, I mean, I know guilty and just save face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know Ohio is in Idaho, but at, at least the eight members of the Roden family got to be put to rest. Right. I, I mean, I don't understand. I've never heard of it. You know, I see the logic in it in case, but right. they need to find out. This is pre-trial right now. Are they going to do another autopsy or not? If they're not, release the bodies. Let the Let the family bury those children. Don't keep the bodies in cold storage through every appeals process. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. I was pulling that up if, just in case. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Every time I have a computer, like if I push search, <laughs> it tends to cut me out. So, um, Angela, Angela yeah. makes a great point. They should release those sweet children. Appeals could go on for years and years. Right. I mean, so what do we have to do for closure? We have to wait year. We, I mean, still Lori and Chad get to dictate how this is handled. And that's, that's infuriating. That, that pisses me off. You know, like, why do they get to, why do they get to dictate so many effing things? <laughs> I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of, brushed up on victims rights in idaho yeah. and the bottom line is is that i, mm -hmm. I i'm learning for the first time because i know every state can be different but i'm learning for the first time that if in fact they hold on to those bodies that the, it's not just about closure for the family that is a travesty that mm -hmm. is not got anything to do with justice yeah. whatsoever Right. I, it's, uh, yeah, I feel that, that way too, KDH. I have a feeling Laura Horror is going to try to make at least one more trip to the state hospital. Right. I don't put it past her. She is a, uh, she is a master of her craft. She there will never, there, there will never be closure, <laughs> but allowing the family to bury their children should be of the utmost importance, says Crochet and Bammy. Yeah. It should be, but it's not. I mean, that's the reality of it, guys. <laughs> and I mean, I never really knew that. I never really went through anything like this. So <coughs> it's uh, it's definitely one-sided, it feels like. A lot of times it's very one-sided. Um, uh, uh, oftentimes, a, a lot of times, I'm going to say a lot of times, especially as time goes on. They get more and more left out. Tylee, Tammy, Charles, JJ, and Joe. Those are victims of Lori and Chad. Lori and Chad. Um, and we're like the second wave of that, that ripple effect, you know. We're the ones, you know, everybody that loved those children and loved Charles and loved Tammy and loved Joe. We're all the ones left to pick up the pieces and to, to carry the burden. And it's hard. Sometimes I am five foot three, but I swear I feel like I'm two feet tall because that's how heavy things feel. You know, I, it just doesn't make sense. And I wish that the, the legal system, the justice system wasn't so broken. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot of imperfections, Krisha, and I think yeah. most people on here will agree 
that there's man's law and for those that are believers, whatever religion you are, there's God's law and, you know, God's perfect and man is not. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what, what brings me comfort is knowing that JJ and Tylee's spirits are with God, the embrace of God. And I, mm -hmm. I believe that beyond anything anyone could ever, ever know, those children are the most in the kingdom. It's, it's laid out in scripture. There is no one more important in the kingdom of heaven. Um, children, that's it. That's it. They're the lamb, you know? I mean, for religious folk, it's like, hey, did y'all miss this entire port, the entire part? <laughs> um, did you snooze through this? Were you writing little love stories? Uh well, the good news is, is if we really, there is no good news, but I, I guess I shouldn't have put it that way. But, uh, you know, it's times like these where I want to get depressed about it. But then I think about people like uh, Felony Melanie. And I think about the fact that she's at home right now with Ian. And they know they've got this court hearing coming up on September the 26th. On a bare bones level, they've got to shell out some cash. She wasn't able to get any from Brandon. And obviously, because of their joint custody, she's not getting child support from Brandon. And Brandon's new wife, I hear, she's a, a beautiful woman from what I heard. Mm -hmm. And his life's moving on and everything's okay with that. I don't know if Brandon would be willing to do anything now that uh, his ex-wife there is going to get a felony on her record. But... Uh, she deserves anything that she can get, and she, it will always follow her, no matter what. Right. Uh, just, just as I said uh, on KJ and the Ray, people like this, if they walk the street and they believe some of the stuff that they believed, they are a danger to society mm -hmm. because because they they are been involved in a belief system that equaled into murder. You know. <laughs> yep look i'm gonna share my screen and show y'all the mesa um right uh, <laughs> share Ooh. okay it is right here it's the disposition report and uh anyways uh criminal case or case information melanie Case number 202107655. Case type criminal. Uh, report date 92222 today. And it's a violation code 13 2316A8. Description computer tampering. <laughs> um, the date of violation 3, so March 2nd of 2020. Okay. The date of disposition, they don't have that. Next scheduled court date. And y'all, we've we've been watching this thanks to Biggie. Um so we've been I thought it was last week sometimes, but anyways. So it says the uh non-jury trial, one hour, 926, 2022 at 8 30 a.m. At I guess an oral argument should be fun. Same date. I don't know. So that's new. I mean, you know, it's different than when I looked at it a couple weeks ago. Well, <laughs> I think Garrett Smith would be a dumbass like he is anyway, in my opinion. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an alleged dumbass, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I think he would be a dummy to not have her plead. And that's exactly what it sounds like to me. If it's going to be an oral argument, it's going to be over the disposition of it. It seems that uh, she's probably going to plead because they've got the clear cut evidence on her. Yep. So, um, and he's admitted like an idiot that mm -hmm. she, she did. And he wanted to personally attack Brandon once again. You'd think he'd learn his lesson. You know, he called him everything else, but I guess he can get away with calling Brandon dumb, huh? Well, yeah. it seems to me old Garrett Smith there's the dummy. Ain't that some I, stuff? You, uh, yeah, he called him dumb. Because, oh my God, well, because I had it open, she shouldn't have went and act. It, it allowed the felony Melanie to access it. 
she shouldn't have been accessing it. You know, it's like you want to go slap the hell out of them. <laughs> I'm just like, what? The hell hell what? She she wanted that money. I mean, we all know she wanted money enough to try to take her, uh, take Brandon out in the first place. But when that didn't work, <laughs> she had to find see because that's what it equaled to her. Her kids, her kids equal child support payments. Yep. I mean, look at Lori. It don't, don't and she just like her aunt Lori. Her aunt Lori's talking about. I'm still gonna get the four thousand a month. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to make it. <laughs> you know, Chad, he, he didn't make no damn money. He don't make sense either. <laughs> well, have y'all noticed? I mean, we ain't talked about it in a while, but she's indigent. Okay, so that proves to you right there that her husband hasn't given her shit. Okay, well, no, Tammy's money. Tam I, uh, I always resort back to that as Tammy's blood money. Yeah, well, where's that, that Ziploc bag? Did. Where's that right. Ziploc bag, Lori? Where's the Ziploc bag? Where's your money, honey? It's empty. It's empty. So, is you know, that's why the property, um, which Judge Eden signed off on that a while back, um, the property, Chad signed it, had to sign it over to uh, John Pryor. So, damn property, and I want to mow it down. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if anybody thinks John Pryor can handle this without a second chair. Uh, he seems to be doing okay. I, I don't know how it's going to work out, but, uh, you know, I, I honestly, I just do not see either one of them being able to successfully throw each other under the bus. I just don't. Neither one of them can be trusted for crap. Yeah. I don't understand. It's, uh, I, I guess, you know, when the trial does come, we're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff that we never wanted to know. Right. Um, hey, and, let, me, let me do something unrelated here real quick. It just reminded me. Go Beach, Beach Bum says, good to see you. Language <laughs> of Horses. Y'all, Language of Horses has uh, her own little channel about her horses and stuff. So go on Language of Horses, oh. her little channel, and subscribe because she's got some neat stuff of her horses on there. Awesome. That's really, I heard you say that the other day, KJ, and I just haven't had a chance to go over and, and <clears throat> check it out. And Yeah, uh, Can Dance and my friend Jenny had reposted it. And I, I've been meaning to do it, but I just got sidetracked. But Language of Horses <laughs> has their own little, her own little channel. Well, cool. And got some neat stuff. Sure. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Um, and we love Can Dance and our friend Jenny. <laughs> and we love the old mom. And we love Big E. I'm missing Big E. He's been going to that trial every day. I know. He's cheating on us. No, I'm picking. <laughs> no, he's he's doing what, what he does, what, what Eric does. And that's advocate and really well. Y'all, he's the never knew I, I needed or wanted. The big brother I never knew I needed. And you know, God puts people in, and and it's pretty amazing to see how He lands everybody out. I look back and I see God's army. And it's just amazing what has been assembled and created out of this this nightmare, you know. And that's this community. This community means the very most to me. Y'all mean the most to me. Um, you've got the you've got the best of the best here. All these people are are the best of the best as far as I my, that's my view. That's, that's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And uh, Casey <laughs> Casey L uh, asked about Can Dance and my friend Jenny uploading a video. They did one on uh, We Need Transparency, but I don't know if they're going to do one later on this week or not. They usually will. They'll try to let people know on their community wall, but I don't know if they're going to or not. Oh, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing them and whenever they come out with something else. Yeah. What do y'all want to talk about Sunday? Okay. Cause I, I mean, just a little bit of everything. Um, I'm, sh I'm, Oh my God, I'm working on some stuff, but it's more of the doctrinal side. It's, it's actually all the doctrinal side and not everybody's interested in that. So I'm probably just do that on my Patreon and, um, Oh, Anna Brown. You, Anna. And and thank you. I didn't get to see or keep up with chat because, you know, working on technical difficulties back here. 
to support Crash to get to the trial to get justice. I love Thank you, you. Susanna Brown. I love y'all too. And there were some donations on uh, uh, PayPal. I just didn't. Get, I finally figured out how to <laughs> to work Google. Um, you know, like when I came on and I had uh, the Dateline episode playing, there's Google Drive and stuff. And it's just easier to play videos and stuff from there. Figure that out and then run out of time to make, you know, put a slideshow together. So <laughs> next time, watch out if my internet is working correctly. <laughs> you know, if, that, if things ever line cool. up, y'all better watch. <laughs> yeah, there was a, Anyways. I know there was a suggestion on KJ and the Ray and I never implemented, I have to confess, but Gene Panek said something about for everyone that has a little bit of information about stuff that they have gathered together, mm -hmm. it could be just a big, you know, like a big uh, crime salad day Sunday, you know, where everybody kind of brings their own dressing. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's exactly what it is. So Katie H says we should maybe do an information drop session on major players. And I mean, that really sounds good. Let's, I mean, y'all want to focus on Zalema? We don't get to talk about her enough. I want to, I mean, y'all, cause I had researched all kinds of cuddle therapy and stuff like that. I was blown away. My mouth is, my jaws on the floor. <laughs> it's great. Are you talking floor. about where she was talking about her trade and she talked about, I always, I don't get involved in groups. I just no, don't funny. do that. You, you're, I mean, you're, she is pathetic. Oh that's my. Nona Gibbs. She was like, I don't do groups anymore. No more groups. You know, I thought about making a damn shirt saying no more groups because that's the problem. Yeah, but I'm Zulema said it. <laughs> Zulema, when Zulema went on that woman's thing to explain what she did, she said the same thing, Tresha. I know for a fact oh, she, really? she said she don't okay. get into do, uh, being in groups and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. It slipped by me too. Can't hear her damn mousy ass. Can't hear none of them. I'm like, what? What are they freaking saying? Talk up. Act like you're oh, casting a spell. I love this KDH talking about potluck style session with go. everyone bringing something. All right. Well, Sunday. Uh, Rom's going to bring the filet of flip flops. Yeah. I was going to say some kind of shoe. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, until then, y'all can join the Discord app. And Kathy's amazing at running that and this. She's doing all the stuff. Like, she just clicked that. She's clicking all the comments. I don't have to do that. And it's so freaking just, it's a relief. And so I appreciate her for that and everything else she does. Everything that, that, all y'all do. I, I, I can't thank y'all enough. But let's prepare for a Sunday potluck. That sounds good. And for anybody that kind of wants to bring their information, I guess you can say. Um, if you would like, you know, just share it with Kathy on Discord. And um, we'll take it from there. I'll try and throw some things together for Sunday. Um, and, and, and ask those questions. I'm not, I mean, Kresha yeah. might not have the answer, but sometimes... If a question's asked, you might not get the answer, but it might lead you to another answer. It's exactly what it does. That's exactly what it does. You know, uh, that's, it's so vast. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes an entire world to, uh, to track and keep all the information of Chad and Lori Vallow Daybell. Okay. And it takes a village. <laughs> it well, takes the, the, the Betty Boob says, yeah, what has Zulema been up to these few years? Well, let's all just mm -hmm. get down to the nitty gritty. You haven't heard from Brandon. You haven't heard from Melanie P or Ian. You haven't heard from, uh, and, and think about this, y'all. Y'all seen the interviews of all those casting women. Christina Atwood, uh, Serena Sharp. They don't go off my radar. And, and, and I watch, I watch preparing a people or latter day media, like a, and they are doing every week. They're doing club on visions of, okay. Oh my God. In depth, you know? And so and, I've been watching that and following and I'm just like, geez, geez, they don't stop. They're never going to stop. Yeah. Well, the, the question is, is why, why haven't we seen a police interview with Melanie P or Ian? I can gonna tell go to jail. <laughs> because they do not want to do a police interview. Oh, they okay. don't want, I mean, we saw Zulemas, we saw Melanie Gibbs, we saw uh, <laughs> all these other people's interviews with the Rexburg Police Department, Chandler Police Department. 
what about uh what about melanie p and and why wonder why we haven't seen their recorded police interviews because they're not going to do it because they got all this crap that they because they're going to deny them. deny 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 they didn't do anything wrong nothing was done wrong and when we were going over you know melanie and and um uh Brandon a couple of weeks ago and I was going over the time, you know, kind of a time, a news story or something that I had printed off. And I was thinking, I'm like, wait, she doesn't, Melanie Pulowski didn't even know. She didn't even know. Um, thank you, Kim. I just got a $30 donation. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kim. Um, yes. So much. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, um, yeah, I was like, Melanie, Pulowski allegedly did not know Ian at the time of, you know, Brandon's uh, attempt. And so I'm thinking, well, I mean, so how would he know any of this? Right. Unless it was told to him or he picked it up on the wire. I, I don't know. I, I sit there and I go back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to continue to do so until it, I get answers. Of course. What, what what was that one about, uh, Chris? You remember Melanie P coming to the interview with the baby? I don't remember that. Yeah, I started the stream out with it last time. Um, remember, they were getting served the papers from Idaho to attend the grandchild. Oh, I thought I'm talking about actual. I'm talking about actual police interviews like Zulema and Melanie give. Right. Yeah. Not in, you know, in not interrogations because there there's no such thing in this case in my opinion but yes i know what you're talking about yeah and there's not one they've done dateline they've done abc the 2020 i think um melanie i was wondering why she wasn't in the documentary with janice and summer wasn't in there either um, well they they definitely told their family story didn't they uh janice and kobe are the truth tellers <laughs> And Thank by you, the Paul. way, you know, y'all know I ain't going to give it up. I'm just going to say it. I said that when this Netflix came out, I said I wasn't going to watch it. But I said, knowing what we know now, whether you agree or disagree about Kobe being arrested and released or whatever you think, the bottom line is it don't match up to the way things are in that Netflix. It's just it just yeah. doesn't. Thank you, Paula. Cards and Cavaliers says, Crusher, can you interview Rich, the PI? I always wondered why he said Ian and MP knew each other before all this went down. And I think the same damn thing. I mean, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to. I don't see why it would hurt either. Not like I'm going to be testifying, you know, but um, it's up to him. I'll, I'll definitely put my fillers out. Cards and <laughs> Cardinals, when you say, how can Ian not realize the danger he is in? Well, the only thing I can come up with on that is, is he knew Melanie was involved in all this. You can see it clearly in the document. And maybe, you know, he, he himself, you know, he himself uh, maybe done something underhanded. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember in the inter interview where Melanie uh, P says, well, he did. I felt I, 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 it could have been a betrayal. But uh, when he recorded me without me knowing, but there was nothing said that, you know, she was basically saying nothing was said. Well, he could have told her. He could have yeah. said, Melanie P, I, I, I'm being uh, recorded. You need to not say anything about anything. We don't right. know, y'all. While just they're making whoopee, at least, you know, at least while they're doing the <laughs> making whoopee. Hey, I'm wired, you know, <laughs> whatever. Well, I, she's I, popped out a baby for him, so, you know, maybe well, she needs 15 that. more, so they cannot get taken away also. I'm sorry. Well, that's just being passive aggressive, and I'm sorry. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is, is he's got, you know, I know he's, where'd you say he worked? He worked at some kind of. It looked like a plumbing van, rotor rooter or something. No, it was uh, like an incense company or. Oh, company no. Or something. He worked or, for Malaluca, Malaluca plant, Malaluca plant in Rexburg. Which is owned by Frank Frank Vandersloot, which is a billionaire. And I yeah, well, I hope he's picking up some extra hours so he can stick money into Garrett Slimy Smith's pocket. Because uh, the bottom Brandon. line is, is uh, <laughs> this woman ain't never going to ever live the way she was before. Before she allowed herself to be, uh, it was her uh, decision ultimately when Lori told her that Brandon was gay. Give me a break. Give me a break. 
Hmm. Oh, I was reading Jules J comment. It says to let him wait to let him talk about Joe Ryan. There are court docs that say Lori forced him to. Oh, okay. Okay. In reference to that's why I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. My bad. Um, yeah. I, I, so it makes me think that Ian is part of it. Uh, if not, he is now, you know, I mean, that is what it is. Did, did Natalie, it. did Natalie even at all give you her opinion about whether yes. Ian was dirty in this or not? It, um, I, yes. But um, no, or what? She yes gave no. me her opinion, but I don't really. You don't uh, feel comfortable explaining it. I get I mean, it. I won't go into detail, but no, she did not feel that Ian was, and you know, would be involved in something like this. But yeah, she uh, totally is freaked out by uh, Melanie Pulaski's teeth and her eye and her eyelashes. <laughs> Here you go. And let's let's just wrap up on the Netflix there. When Leah Soddle points out that the result of the custody agreement between Lori and Joseph Ryan doesn't appear in the series, and it was pointed out that Julie Rowe, who is mm -hmm. one of the so-called truth tellers <laughs> in that documentary, had Makes her fun. membership withdrawn from the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints and was involved in a voice of warning where she met Chad Daybell. Mm -hmm. So you got you got Janice, you got Kobe, you got Julie, you got uh, uh, Barry. Mm -hmm. Who else was in there uh, that was part April, of the family? April Raymond. Uh, uh, Kelsey. Well, I believe yeah, Kelsey. Annie, I Annie believe too, Kelsey yeah. over. Annie, Annie also. Um, yeah, Ian does deserve a deep dive, y'all. <laughs> I just, I, today's what, what is today? Thursday, Friday? What is the day? What's, is it Thursday or Friday, KJ? Today is Thursday. Okay. So that would only give me a couple days. I would need more than a couple days to really, for me, because <clears throat> I'm a gatherer also of, of all this crap. <laughs> and I'm like, I, it's all on my phone. Trust me. Trust me, <laughs> I've got everything in my damn phone. It's just a lot of pictures and a lot of things to look at. Then it's I've, I'm ADD, crazy ADD, and I, I go little tangents all by myself, all over again. T.S. Jackson, seventy-two. If I ever read another book, it'll be Kresha K. Easton's book, but that's the only one I'll ever read from here on out. Oh, <laughs> I never thought I would ever. Uh, nowhere in my life have I been like, oh, I want to write a book. But you know what? I, there's a couple of projects I want to do, you know, and I've shared them here before with compiling everybody's kind of their victim impact statement, you know, what they would say or something or a tribute to the victims and then put that all into a book. And then, and then I started, I'll write a memoir. And I don't even know the difference between any of it. You know, I'm like, I don't know what a Versus a, a whatever. And then, you know, it's just, it's quite the experience to actually have to go through. And I'm not, my words, like, and stuff. You know, I get time. I'm better at putting my feelings to paper and my thoughts to paper than I am anything else. Um, no, we'll go there. Uh Carrie Ann, I know you're asking Kresha, and I'm sure she'll answer, but I'll just tell you quickly here. If my best friend or a good friend of mine showed up on my doorstep and I went out later on after the fact and told everyone she she looked like she was going through some kind of midlife crisis, she was acting strange and all that, knowing she had children, she could have called Charles. She could have called someone who could have helped Lori, but instead she didn't. That's what I think of April Raymond. That that's just me. Mm hmm Yep. What is going on with that? <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. Well, let's do Sunday potluck. Uh, How about that? Do I bring the vegetables or the meat? <laughs> 
I'll get mom to bring the potato salad. Oh, she <laughs> makes good food. She... Uh, that's the one thing I don't like of, you know, that was passed down from my grandma is the potato salad. Because it's got like celery in it and stuff like that. And I'm like, ew, I don't like crunchy things and, and the soft stuff. So oh, sense. I'm going to tell you what. You know what I'm having for supper tonight? <laughs> Donna Donald says, I will bring the pot. <laughs> uh, you know, you know you what I'm it, having? Okay. You know what I'm going to have for supper tonight? What's that? Eggs, bacon, and pancakes. Oh, that's, you know, we used to do that every now and then. And mom used to always also have, we'd have like a fin for yourself night also. <laughs> like get in there and fix you something, you know? <laughs> so y'all have been amazing. Thank you, KJ, for, as always, for bringing your, your everything, your questions, your perspective. Your yeah, well, let me just ending. Yeah, let me remind everyone, if I ever come on here, these are my views. These are not the views of Crusher or Difficult Research. These are KJ's views. And she puts up with me because she loves me because I, I love, love her. her. <laughs> I love her. Let, you know. Let's just remember that, though, because, you know, mm -hmm. I have colorful language sometime and I say things probably inappropriate and I don't want that to reflect on her channel. <laughs> I do enough by myself. No. <laughs> Hey DJ, it's so good to see you. I, I definitely I've been I'm gonna I've got to get mentally prepared. <laughs> oh man, DJ works very hard, very hard behind you know the scenes. So, anyways, he's got a lot of insight that hopefully will make uh, more sense to us one day. So, but anyway, I love you, for being here. I, I love, love you, guys. Donna Donald. Ashley KJ for president. <laughs> KJ for president. Uh, KCL, Paula, Jude's Batiks, Anna Brown, DJ Norman, Tina Reddington, Jennifer, Moonlight View, Jay Hughes, Little Bronze, Kimberly Sisk, Leanne Ferguson, Trace on the Case, Moonlight View, Crocheting Bammy, Cards and Cavaliers, Rombohedra. There you go. And uh, Anita Keeler, Zero. James Soliday. Oh, I, I, I just, uh, T.S. Yeah, Jackson, man. 72. Lil Brian Rivera. <laughs> so many. Uh, Leanne Ferguson, Tina Reddington, Casey, L. Donna Donald, Zero Crochet. Oh, I already got you Crochet and Bammy. But yeah, thank you guys. Um, Y'all make this, this possible. So um, we'll see you Sunday. Oh, also go and sign the petition. Um, I don't have the link, but we do in discord and we'll share it in the description box below the video. Um, anyways, it's a petition for transparency for um, cameras in the courtroom. Somewhat some kind of transparency anyways. Um, and thank you, Carol M for doing that. And thank you mods. Um, all right. Talking about the damn Academy Awards. <laughs> hey, Crescia. Yeah. Crescia. Yes. Keep on looking. <laughs> Funny. Bye, guys. Love always wins.